Hello, biology students. This is Mrs. Abrams, and this particular lecture is going to focus on DNA as a structure. Uh, we've talked about what DNA does, is that it, it is a code. And what is a code for? Well, it codes for amino acids. And we know that amino acids are monomers of proteins. And so when we look at this DNA double helix, twisted ladder, if you will, we know that inside DNA there is a code. DNA is actually copied by RNA, ribonucleic acid. And here we see the process of DNA opening up and messenger RNA actually copying through this process of base pairing that we'll talk about that code and taking it out to the ribosomes. The ribosomes are the place where a translation can actually occur. And finally, the outcome will be proteins. Proteins are what give us our traits. And what you should have learned in the video I ask you to watch on the history of DNA is that we start with Frederick Meischer. And with Frederick Meischer, what we learned is that DNA is a structure that has some significance. Remember that Mendel didn't know anything about DNA. He only knew that there were some factors controlling the traits. Meischer, at the turn of the century, started to look at DNA as a structure and believed that that may be the structure that carried this magnificent code that gives us our traits. Most people weren't buying into that, most scientists, scientific community. They said it's far too small to be able to carry all the traits for any organism. And so from the turn of the century until 1952, when the structure of DNA was actually identified, 1952, 1953, we have these series of experiments to try and identify what DNA really did inside the cell. In 1928, you saw Griffith's experiments with the mice and using the pneumonia, all right, some that was capsulated, some encapsulated. And we know that Griffiths wasn't re really able to determine a lot, except that something changed. Like Mendel, he didn't know what that something was, but he was able to determine that something had changed inside those uh, cells. In 1943, we have Avery and his associates, Macklin McCarty and Colin McLeod, who repeated those experiments. And what they identified is, through the process of elimination, that nucleic acids were actually what were causing the changes. So we're looking at DNA here. In 1952, now we're going from 1943 to 1952, more and more scientists are buying into the fact that, okay, DNA has a more significant role than we originally thought, but not until the experiments in 1952 of Hershey and Chase to Americans were they able to really show scientists that DNA was a structure that was causing change inside a cell. And so they used what's called a bacteriophage. So here you see it's bacteriophage, which is a virus. And of course, today we know a lot about viruses. A bacteriophage is a virus that infects a bacteria. And what they did was they isolated the protein coat surrounding the DNA and the DNA itself inside the protein coat. And what they found is when they isolated the protein coat to see what was actually injecting into the bacterium, it wasn't there. Only when they isolated the DNA were they able to actually see the core of this DNA being injected into the bacteria itself. And because of their work and the x-ray evidence that they were able to provide, in 1952, most scientists of the day believe that, okay, DNA is carrying some kind of code that is able to account for our traits. In 1952, of course, we've got Watson and Crick, Maurice Wilkins, Rosalind Franklin, all working. And it was a race, really, to discover what was going on with this DNA. How was DNA, this tiny little structure, lived inside a nucleus? How is it able to transmit our traits? 
Watson and Crick using working with a number of other scientists, but really focused on the two together, decided that DNA looked like a slinky, a spiral. And only with the work of Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins, Rosalind Franklin actually leading this, using X-ray crystallography, was she able to show this particular image. So in a slinky, the middle is open. But you'll notice in this image of DNA, what they saw was there was a crossbar. And so what Watson and Crick realized is that the structure that they had designed was wrong. What Franklin's crystallography had shown them was that it wasn't a spiral. It was, in fact, a double helix. Now, um, as you learned in the video, Franklin did not get credit for her work not until 50 years later, on the 50th anniversary of the discovery of DNA in February of 1953, Watson and Crick both gave, gave credit to Rosalind Franklin, who had long since been uh, died, and saying that without her work, they would have not come up with a structure in 1953 that showed us what DNA really looks like. And so there's this double helix. Linus Pauling was another scientist of the time that came up with the idea of a triple helix. And so you'll notice that you've got the red, the gray, and the blue. The red represents the sugar, the gray represents the phosphorus or the phosphate group. So they're the sides, and in the middle we have these blue structures, where the, which were the nitrogen bases. So now is when we come to work with these A, T, C's, and G's that we've been talking about. So what we have on this left side of the diagram is a nucleotide. A nucleotide is a single unit of DNA. That nucleotide is made up of a phosphate group, which is here, the sugar, which is deoxyribose, it's a five-sided sugar, and a nitrogen base. This is one side of that twisted ladder or double helix. The nitrogen bases, we have four nitrogen bases, adenine and guanine, cytosine and thiamine. Adenine and guanine are what we call purines. Cytosine and thiamine are pyridamines. And we're going to leave the uracil out of this for right now. Uracil is only found in RNA. We need to focus just on DNA at this particular point in time. So what we see is that on this nucleotide we'll have the phosphate, sugar group, a phosphate down here where the arrow would be to form the side of the ladder. And the rungs of the ladder are going to be formed by a nitrogen base. So we've got a nucleotide on this side, and actually on the other side of this, you'd have another group that would make up the other side of the ladder. So what we see when we look at these bases, let's just focus on the left side, thiamine and cytosine are called pyridamines. They're single units. Now notice the thiamine Cytosine both have a Y in. So does the word pyridamine. That's going to help you remember which ones are the pyridamines and which are the purines. The purines are actually double ringed. They're larger. All right. So we have adenine and we have guanine that are purines found in DNA. When these two sides of the ladder go together, we have what's called base pairing. A pair means two. So adenine will always go with thiamine. Guanine will always go with cytosine. If I scroll down here a little bit further to Chargers rules, uh, let's find Chargers. Anyway, what you saw in the video is that Chargers rules told us that A has to go with T and C has to go with G. And the reason it works that way is because of the double rings versus the single rings. A double ring is always going to match up with a single ring. If the double rings matched up together and the single rings matched up together, it would look like an hourglass going back and forth. So in order that the DNA structure maintains symmetry, a purine is always going to bind with a pyridamine. So adenine always binds with thiamine, cytosine always binds with guanine. So here we have this double-stranded model. We're looking now at both sides of the ladder. Again, pure phosphorus, sugar, 
phosphorus, sugar. There's the side of our ladder. Same thing on the other side. There's our rails. Phosphorus and the sugar, deoxyribose. In between, we have purines and pyridamines. So in the first one, we've got cytosine binding with guanine. Remember, cytosine is going to be the smaller. All right. It's going to bind with guanine. In the next one down, adenine will bind with thiamine. Notice in between these lines, it looks like T and equals A. Those two lines represent hydrogen bonds. Remember from chemistry, hydrogen bonds are weak bonds. We talked about the different types of bonds, the hydrogen being the weakest. So those weak bonds enable that DNA structure to break apart. When it goes through reproduction, the sides of DNA break apart into single units that allows it to be copied. RNA does the job of copying that, which we'll get to later. But this is what occurs in the copying process. So here we have the DNA strand. Now, let me go out of this and find my Word document here. All right, I may have to bring it up again. Oops. I'm going to upload this particular diagram to you guys. Now notice, only part of it is labeled. So what you know is you've got a phosphate group, a sugar, deoxyribose, a phosphate group, a sugar, and so on. Remember, this is a nucleotide. So let's look inside. So if this is C, we know that this side has to be G. Look at the structure, C and G, so you can look at that and know that they are identical. Now, we know that A is here and G is here. A has to go with G. This is the what we call base pairing. A goes with G, C goes with, cytosine so goes with G. So look at the difference. We know that this is a CG combination. Remember, the guanine is going to be bigger than the cytosine. Over here, notice the difference in where it joins. So if you look at that structure, you'll know that A goes with T. So if adenine is here, thiamine is going to be here. So what you're going to do in this particular project is you're going to color and give me the key. I don't care what colors you use, but they should be different. All the phosphorus should be the same. All the sugar should be the same. All the cytosine should be the same color. All the guanine should be the same color. All the adenines the same color. All the thiamines the same color. So you're going to give me the key over here. And then as I scroll down, you're going to answer that question. What is DNA? So this is a practice page for you guys to work on. And I will be loading this on portals for you all to copy and work with. You can either download the page and color it using uh, coloring that you have on your iPad, or you can print the page, color it with colored pencils. It doesn't matter to me how you handle it. All right, so that's our quick lesson on the structure of DNA, and um, we'll move on to RNA in my next lecture.